All right, so we're gonna go through how we bleed the coolant system. As you can see, we've got the coolant tank here uh, detached, as in unscrewed. I'll put it back down for showing purposes. Um, got the car on the ground. Car is level. Um, as you can see. Um, before I start the bleeding process, I don't have the front bumper cover on you right now because, yeah, well, that's another story. Um, I've got the bleed hole open. Back here, you take that clamp. I took you some vice grips to get that clamp down as far uh, off the off this uh, plastic nipple in the heater core, and then I used a uh, screwdriver to help push it back while I pulled down here on the uh, on the hose. You don't want to crack uh, or damage that uh, coolant nipple because uh, then you'll have to replace the heater core, and that's a pain in the butt. I'm sure. If you do some research you'll see you have to remove the whole dash and all that fun stuff anyway so you have that open at the car level fill up the coolant reservoir like this I like to use a uh, a cut up water bottle like that cut the bottom off as a funnel or use some other kind of funnel um, after you filled it up uh, to, I don't know, maybe the mid mark down here. Going much further makes it uh, a little more difficult for it to, to self fill itself because uh, it's got to burp itself. Um, then you stand the coolant system, you move the reservoir up as far as you can. Obviously, back here, this is detached, the uh, coolant level sensor is detached. Um, so you stand this up and it'll burp itself. Um, I'll stick you on the stand and eventually what will happen is back here coolant will start coming out of that nipple and it'll get everywhere. Um, it'll fall down to the shelf and then if you have enough come of it come out it'll fall down on the shelf and then it'll fall down to the ground underneath your car. Um, not a huge deal but as soon as it starts coming out you'll see it just slide that coolant hose back up with your hand. You should be able to do it with your hand and then uh, put the reservoir down um, and then you can put the cap on the reservoir and uh, use the vice grips to move that spring clamp back and you will flood the system. Um, after that you'll then have to start the car, uh, warm it up, get it up to temperature. Uh, before you start the car make sure you got everything clear of your engine base. So you don't got stuff flying around. There are some gloves in there. Um, I still got a piece of wood over there. Um, start the car, warm the car up until the radiator opens, uh, uh, until the uh, thermostat opens, and this upper radiator hose gets hot or warm. Um, and then uh, at that point, uh, make sure. You, oh, also make sure you've got your heater in your car in the cabin on full, full hot, all the way to the hot uh, while you're doing this. Um, needs to be it so that the heater core is getting full coolant uh, as you're filling the coolant system. And then obviously keep it blowing hot when you start the car. After you warm up the car and you get this radiator hose hot, uh, turn the car off. Uh, you're gonna have to walk away, let the car cool down or work on something else while it depressurizes itself so you can remove the remove the cap without burning yourself or scalding yourself so don't do that you know don't uh, turn it right off and remove the cap wait a while for it to cool down and then um, after you've done that uh, check the level on the tank the tank will be you know sitting like this again where it should be uh, and should be uh, when it's cold uh, it should be uh, towards the min mark um, or in between the min and max mark. Um, when it's hot, it should be uh, right above, I mean right below the uh, max mark on the on the, uh, the coolant bottle expansion tank. So there you go, that's how you bleed your system. I'll stick you on the rack here. Give you, watch me as I do my final steps on this.
pretty much. But So I need to shake it up. We want to make sure it's nice and mixed. Just did 50-50 mixture. Poured out half of this into a separate container, and then poured uh, poured it back to where the full line was that I made. The full I made my own full line um, with uh, distilled water. Now we've got a full mixture. Or 50 50 mixture. Really tough to start and stop. Um, when you got a full, a full jug, and you know you're not going to just be able to keep pouring, 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 because uh, you've got almost got a full system. I make sure I've always got a little rag and wipe up any spills. This should be enough. right here to get it to at least start bleeding out. So once I get it start bleeding out, I'll move it up, I'll put the Kuma Reservoir down, I'll fill it back up, and then uh, fill it up the rest of the way. Clamp stuff down. Tighten her all up. See how it goes. Got it. Started bleeding out. Just a little dribble. You didn't see it like shoot out or anything like that, but I couldn't pick you up. Um, you also noticed I picked up the uh, tank to make it come out a little faster. Um, I'm actually going to leave that up here while I get the vice grips on it and, and clamp it down. Um, and then I moved it up. Clamp down. Stick this down. You can see it's a little bit below the min level right now. We'll fill it up into, to somewhere between the min and the max level once I put down these ice grips.
Alright, right now I'm filled up in between the min and max level. Like right in the middle. Take you off the stand there and give you a closer look. Just give me a second. Here's the coolant level. You can see it's just above, just below this bottom uh, line. I expect after I start up and it takes in some of the coolant that it will uh, drop a little bit um, as it pushes it through the system and bleeds out the rest of it. Bleeds it out the rest of the way.